Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Katie, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Laramie and I will be running today's webinar on Common Core Math on CK12. We're so glad you've joined us. Before we get started with the main content of today's webinar, I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two options on your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During our presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. That will help us track which questions we've answered and allow us to make sure we get to all of your questions before we sign off today. The chat window, on the other hand, is a place for community conversation. Feel free to introduce yourself. If you're an educator, share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure that you're sending posts to all panelists and attendees if you want someone other than just the CK12 team to see your post. While we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you are having any trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in Q&A or the chat window. We've created a handy resource page for each webinar session that we do. You can find it at the tiny URL listed on the screen, tinyurl.com slash ck12ccss for Common Core State Standards. And we'll also put the link for today's resource in the chat window right now. You're welcome to print this resource page or simply save it to your desktop. We hope you can use it after this webinar as a reference for when you are working on the assignment, if you are doing the CK12 Certified Educator Program, or when you're using and customizing our new Common Core Math Flexbooks throughout the year. As we said, today's session is called Common Core Math on CK12. Specifically during this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. Adding interactivity and clicks, so we've included embedded interactives directly within the text of CK12 Flexbooks, and this includes both clicks and our custom embedded interactives. We'll be talking about accessing and exploring our Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry books, our newest Math 8 book that just got published recently, and our upcoming 6th and 7th grade Mathematics Flexbooks. And then we'll talk about strategies for using these CCSS interactive flexbooks, which includes teaching guides and strategies for incorporating them both in and outside of class time. We also want to find out if any of you have explored our book so far and what you are looking for in a Common Core Flexbook. You'll see a poll here in a few seconds that will prompt you to respond to two short questions. So let's see if we can get that poll up and running. There we go. So the first question is, have you explored any CK12 Flexbooks with embedded interactives? If you already use our eighth grade book that just got published, either of our algebra books or a geometry book, let us know. If you've kind of seen these, but you haven't had a chance to explore them, or if you're brand new to these particular resources that CK12 offers, let us know that. And then also please let us know what you're looking for in a Flexbook. Are you looking for interactivity, guided discovery, examples, practice, or maybe something else specific that we might be able to take into account down the road? And if so, for that last one, if you choose other, please feel free to note your thoughts in the chat window. So we'll pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. And you're welcome to select more than one answer for the second question. Okay, it looks like we're starting to get some answers in. Uh, maybe we'll give you another second or two. And I think with that, we'll wrap that up and share those results. So it looks like most of you guys are new to these books. You either haven't seen them at all or you are, haven't really had a chance to explore them. So this is perfect. If you're already using one of our books, maybe you'll get a chance to explore a new book, um, especially kind of some of our upcoming middle school math books. Those will be great for you to check out. Um, and then it's really helpful to see some of the um, things that you're looking for. So we definitely include a lot of these pieces in our newest books. Um, and hopefully we'll see what other thoughts you have as we move forward. So with that, I'm going to talk about our included PLICs. So CK12's PLICs, they stand for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. So for all of you guys that were looking for that interactivity in your books and maybe some of that guided discovery piece, we're working our way through these books and actually you'll see included PLICs that launch a full interactive in a separate window. Um, and those PLICs include a description, 
an interactive frame, links to content information, and even challenge questions that kind of build up to higher order thinking. More of those plicks, if you like the ones that are in these books, you can always explore our full set of plicks at ck12.org slash plicks. So definitely check those out as Laramie walks through those offerings. We also have included in each of our books custom math interactives and questions. So you'll see kind of on the left side an interactive where students are exploring the square root. You'll see one about angles in the middle, maybe a drag and drop question where they're sorting formulas based on the description for those formulas. Um, we definitely have other simple questions, um, various interactive places that allow students to get feedback as they're working their way through this text and really getting a chance to understand and figure out what they get and what they need to explore further. So, all of these interactives and more can be found in our Common Core Flexbooks, and we've decided to publish those on our 2.0 platform, so that's what we'll be demoing today. You'll get to see kind of that streamlined platform that is accessible. So with that, the question becomes, how do you access all of these new books? And you're welcome to do so by clicking the Try It Now that's across our site. So you'll see that black bar with the Try It Now option, and that will take you to the 2.0 platform page. You can click get started and it'll jump you straight down to those math books. You could also find them in our explore menu that got launched recently and that has access to all of our resources, but there's a common core state standards one and then you can choose flexbooks from there. We're at the very bottom of our page on all of our footers where it says common core math. So all of those are different options for accessing these flexbooks. And then Really, if you're kind of thinking about how we design these books, they were really designed with the Common Core philosophy in mind. That idea of exploring, um, but not just kind of relating to the content standards, which I know a lot of books that are trying to transition into looking at Common Core do, so they're tagged to the Common Core standards, but these ones, the actual lessons were designed with that exploratory and problem solving and interactivity built in already, um, as well as review. So we have live our Algebra 1, Algebra 2 Geometry and our Middle School Math 8 book, and that last one just went live recently. And then we're working on wrapping up our 6th and 7th grade books, and we also have matching teaching guides for each of those books. So I think with that, we're going to swap over. Laramie is going to steal the screen from me, and he's going to actually dig in and show you these books. Hello, everyone, and welcome from Colorado. I am indeed going to steal the screen as soon as I figure out which one to share with you. There we go. Um, I am going to start actually from the CK12 homepage, and I very strongly encourage you all to kind of follow along with me. There'll be a couple of things that open up in full screen and are better for me not to open up because it'll make it hard for me to get back to my presentation. So I'll just say, hey, click here and check this out. For starters though, this is our homepage, ck12.org. And as Katie mentioned a little bit ago, there are three ways to get from here to our new uh, Common Core Math Flexbook 2s. The first one is right up here in the top bar where it says explore, and this is a kind of a new drop down menu for us. You can click on CCSS, or from the home page, you can click on try it now, here this big black bar, or scroll all the way to the bottom and click on Common Core Math under by CK12. So I'm actually going to do the middle option, try it now. Gives you kind of a quick overview of what our new Flexbook 2s are all about. Um, sort of a more streamlined way to access all of our interactive content. CK12 has uh, actually kind of recently realized that there are things that we can offer that we've kind of been holding back on offering from the digital platform, trying to make sure that we weren't losing old capabilities in favor of new capabilities. So we decided we'd have our older uh, PDFable, more standard flexbooks, and now our new very digital interactive flexbooks that are not PDFable because everything in them is interactive. So let's start by taking a look there at Interactive Algebra 1. We're going to come back to the middle school math in a minute. Um, the high school books, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, were the first three Flexbooks that we created in this new uh, Flexbooks 2 platform, the new interactive ones. We decided that uh, as we were sort of diving into the Common Core, one of the, new, one of the most important things was the teaching philosophy that says that students should learn not just the nuts and bolts, but also how to apply them. And by using our new capabilities, the new very digital options that we were going to kind of dive into, it seemed like a great way to tie those two things together. So we started with our three high school math books 
and with a scope and sequence that said, these are all the standards we need to hit, and these are the books that we want to build. Let's put them together. So I'm going to start with that first Algebra 1 book, the first book we created in the new platform. This is the title of the book. And right here at the top, we're going to come back to this in a little bit, but note where there's a link for teacher edition. We're going to come back and look at that in the second half of our program, and I'll show you how to access all the teacher resources. For now, though, we're going to take a look at this book the way a student sees it. There are five major units, um, and under each unit, you can see that there are multiple chapters. Each of the uh, multiple concepts, I mean, sorry, each of these concepts represent uh, an average of two lessons or two class periods. Some of them are three, I think there's even one that's four, uh, but most of them are two class periods. So let's take a look at the first one there linear functions. Right at the top, you'll see we have the purpose of the lesson, what the students are going to learn, and just sort of a really quick introduction uh, talking about what linear functions are. Um, what kinds of things they do, just kind of a little image there, kind of a fun little picture. And then you'll notice, very much like a lot of this book, right up near the top, we start asking questions. These books are very, very strongly built on the Socratic teaching philosophy, where the students are expected to learn by questioning, by trying to figure things out. Every question along the way is, uh, encourages that uh, sort of productive failure idea where the students should never feel bad for not knowing the answer to a question right away because that's how, that's how we teach with these books. You'll see as we go through, there's a whole section here called active learning. The active learning, after a student has had a couple of examples that show them what sorts of questions they're gonna be dealing with, the active learning dives deep into that Socratic productive failure idea where you ask questions that cause them to think right away and encourage them to try and figure things out on their own. Then throughout the book, we have these embedded CK12 Plix interactives. Now, if they're high, uh, headlined like this here, where it says CK12 interactive and kind of a square shape, these are embedded Plix that are the same kinds of Plix you can find from the homepage by clicking on our, our Plix section of our website. This opens into a whole full screen experience. This is one of those ones I said I don't want to click, <laughs> but I do encourage you to take a look at it on your own screen and see how they open up you'll see that there is a section on the left for text and questions and a section on the right for the interactivity. And the questions encourage the students to play with the interactive itself and understand the concept at hand. Each of these has been specifically chosen from our existing library to support the content. So they're fairly tightly integrated. They aren't always the same uh, kind of situation. In this case, we weren't talking about mini golf, but we we're definitely talking about linear expressions. And if we scroll on down through the lesson, you'll see the first of our custom, what we call sort of bespoke embedded interactives here. This particular one was built for this lesson. You'll see where they don't have that kind of little square box, but they're a little longer. These are actually built into the text of the lesson. This section here talks about, you know, as a y-intercept changes, what happens on the graph? You know, how does the graph change? And the students can actually play with the y-intercept and see. They can ask, ask and answer the question right there. Great for class discussion, great for a small group uh, interaction, so that they can actually see immediately how the lesson itself works you know, in, in, in application. Okay, let's take a look at another lesson here, rate of change. Uh, this one has just a couple of different kinds of interactivity in it. This one has a video. Um, I would say in the algebra book, probably one lesson in four or five has a video. This, they are all written for those topics and they're all actual CK12 videos, they're not pulled from anywhere else. Another one of those embedded clicks. A couple of the you know, individual interactives here. This one talks about a wingsuit, a lady trying to fly right over the top of a tower and gets a little more complex. This is a great example of many of the lessons in this book have interactives that are built to support each other, where there'll be one that's a little bit simple introduces the topic and then one shortly afterward that gets a little more complex and shows the students how the, the, uh, the topic builds on itself as they move on. So then finally, we're gonna look at one more example here. Oh, I know I actually wanted to see this one. Uh, take a look at, we're gonna look at the active learning here. So you'll notice when we were building these books, the idea was to, again, ask the students questions and have them learn by questioning. 
So we would put in the question in the, in the text, we'd give them a little bit of backup information, and then we'd kind of describe it and discuss it in the following questions. But there wasn't really a way to interact directly with the students. So we had to kind of do the best we could as far as spacing the answers to a question after the question itself, so there wasn't any frustration. And on that note, I'm going to lead into our new Math 8 book. Since we started the high school books, we have gained a new kind of technology that we call our uh, immediate or on the site or on the point interactivity. I'm going to show you one of our new Math 8 lessons. You'll see it's very similar, although there's a little bit more life right away. The first time we get to an interact interactive in the Math 8 book, directly underneath we have our on the spot interactivity. These questions here ask the students about the interactive above. And the interactive is every one of the ones in this book is written specifically to support the lesson. The lesson here talks about transportation and how transportation is related to translation. And the first interactive they get has them play with the little car, move the car around in the interactive, and then has questions that specifically ask them about how that works and encourage the student to learn from their answers. They aren't just right or wrong, they're this is right and this is why you're right, or this is wrong, try again, um, here's why you're wrong. So this one, for instance, um, the image of a car doesn't change as it's moved because it's translation. So if I think it's stretched perpendicularly, it's gonna tell me why that doesn't work, the fact that a translation is a rigid transformation, which means the image doesn't change. And every question gets a try again if they got it wrong. So ideally, the student will often get a question wrong on the first try, learn why they should answer differently in the next try, and then try again until they get it right. But they're built such that any student who's reading the responses should be able to answer any question correctly by at least the second try. Um, lots of interactivity in the lesson as far as class activities, suggestions for ways for the students to work together. And then um, we're gonna build a little bit more on it in the teacher edition here uh, when we come back to it, but you'll see at the end of every lesson is the option for there to be a final quiz that's already been put together for you to review what the students have done. So it's more of a summative uh, exam rather than the formative that's going on through the lesson itself. Um, I think, oh, uh, related modalities. One of the big changes in all of the Flexbook 2s, whether it's the algebra or the geometry or the uh, uh, middle school math, is this new section down at the bottom called related. And under related are other CK12 modalities, uh, different written lessons, study guides, videos, clicks um, that were specifically curated and chosen for their, their different way of teaching the same material that's in the lesson. So any student that seems to be having trouble picking up a concept in the lesson has lots of other ways to learn the same material to kind of support that and view it from a different point of view. And then once the student has had a chance to go click through the lesson, uh, perhaps you know, we've discussed things in class, maybe used another modality or two, you can send them home and ask them to work on adaptive practice. Every lesson has adaptive practice that's associated with it. Um, as a teacher, I see preview. As a student, it says something like, get started or try it now. Um, and then once they click on that, the screen opens up into practice questions, again, directly related to the content they just came from. The students are expected to get eight right in a row, or not in a row, I'm sorry, just eight right. And would I say eight? Wow, I am off my game here. <laughs> 10 right, not in a row. Just get 10 questions right. And when that's done, you'll get a report as a teacher that says, you know, this is how many questions they tried. This is how long they spent on each question. Here's the right answer they chose or the wrong answer they chose. So that you kind of get a feel as a teacher for how they're doing if you assign this as homework. And then, of course, you can assign that final quiz that I mentioned so you can kind of get a summative review of where they were when, when they get back to class. And I think that's sort of the, the top down here. Do we have any questions about that, Katie? Uh, we don't have any questions so far, so I think you're just means you're doing a phenomenal job. Um, please feel free to post your questions in Q&A as we continue through this uh, webinar. We're happy to answer them kind of in pieces as they come in, or we'll stop a couple times throughout this webinar to go through, um, and we can go from there. So I think if there are no questions at this time, maybe we'll start talking a little bit about teach our teaching guides and strategies. So let me swap back over. Um, and hopefully you all can see our keynote again. Um, and so we're going to start with 
what our teaching guides offer. So the first thing that we want to make clear is there's a little bit of difference in terms of what the high school teaching guides have to offer and what the middle school teaching guides have to offer right now. Um, so just keep that in mind. For the high school ones, they're set up with pacing guides, so kind of helping you figure out how much time you want to plan in for those particular set, um, like sections, what that looks like, where it goes from there. It also includes the standards, oops, sorry, let me go back there. Um, wrong direction, there we go. Um, so it includes the standards there as well, and that relates directly to those common core standards for the concepts that you're working off of. Um, it helps you figure out kind of, okay, if I have to cover this standard at this particular time or in this particular year, how does that relate to what we're con talking about there? We include vocabulary for each section in the teacher guides there. Um, I know I've had different students that I've talked to when I've been in classes ask about like, hey, wh what's the vocab that I need to know for this section or for this topic? And so that's listed directly in those teaching guides there. And then we cover learning outcomes um, and you'll see that on both of them. Um, so making sure that you understand kind of what the goal is for a student to get at by, for that particular lesson. Additional resources, so um, Laramie will show you what these teaching guides look like shortly so we can talk about some of those. And then also teaching notes. So we figured that these are new resources, looking at the Common Core pieces, then there it really gets you kind of a, a new situation and we really wanted to make it clear what it is that we offer to help guide you through that particular process. The middle school teacher's guides are similar. Instead of you know, a general pacing guide, they have kind of the number of class periods that you might wanna cover for that particular topic. They still include the standards. Um, they have student text examples, so you're gonna see like the actual text in the student book and then suggested pieces for the teacher beyond that part. Um, and then those additional resources and teaching notes as well. So Laramie's gonna show you these in a minute, but before we jump into there, I also wanted to talk about teaching strategies in general, which you got a quick preview of as I was trying to go backwards in advance. Um, so in this regard, we have a kind of a couple different ways that we've seen teachers use these flexbooks so far and that we would recommend using them in your classroom. So the first one is this idea of in-class use for our flexbooks. So those instant feedback questions, the ones where kids can try something out and then they get feedback, whether it's right or wrong, it'll encourage them to keep learning. It will help them clarify maybe a misconception they have and then go back in there. That really allows students to do some work and explore on their own. Um, and that could be done individually. A couple of students could work together in a group and they could share and work together and understand that. But you don't have to necessarily be there every single second and they can still do learning and understanding and get feedback as they go. With that in mind, for some of those interactives that uh, might or might not have the questions directly below it, students could try playing around with them and then talk to a neighbor. They can compare the state of that interactive. What angle do I have? Where does that go? How does that work out? Um, and then look at a neighbor and have a conversation about, oh, do we both find a solution that works for something? How are ours different and what does that mean for the learning that particular topic? And then we have active learning problems throughout um, and you could use some of those questions as a warm up or an introduction to a topic. We've seen um, teachers use plics in a similar way where they kind of post that plics on the class screen, whatever that looks like, whether a projector or a smart board or something like that, and then have the students do it together as a warm-up or an introduction. Um, you can definitely assign these sections for homework. In this new 2.0 platform, you're assigning the text and that practice that Laramie was showing you in one shot, and then it will report back a score for you. That can be done in Google Classroom and our CK12 classes right now, and then we're working on the interactivity, or sorry, the integration for Canvas and Schoology at this time. So in our original ones, you were assigning kind of the section for homework and you were assigning the matching practice. In this case, you're assigning those actually together in one shot in 2.0. Um, but Laramie will be showing you some quiz pieces so you could assign the matching quiz as well if you wanted to. And then for some of that interactivity, we're looking into options for how we might be able to share what students are doing with teachers. But for right now, if you wanted students to do some of those questions within the text, do some of that interactivity within the text and share that, we would recommend that they just take a screenshot of those questions or those interactives and they could submit that to you as proof that they had worked their way through. 
We also have some kind of strategies for students and how they could engage more with these lessons. One is that you could use, we've built actually a bunch of our interactives in GeoGebra. So if you're looking to do something, you could challenge students to build their own interactive. And then you could include that in a customized version of your Flexbook for a future year if you wanted to. We also have highlighting and note-taking um, annotation tools on our site and students are more than welcome to use those to take notes on key vocabulary, key formulas, and kind of focus in on those key ideas as they work their way through. And then finally, this idea of differentiation. So we really, the goal with a lot of our resources and kind of all of those related learning modalities and all of the different ways to explore and give feedback to students is to help students explore at their level, meet them where they are, and then kind of guide them through the next piece of learning and explain from there what happens. The practice in particular does a really good job with that because it adjusts to their student understanding and their progress and it allows students to get more challenging questions if they're being successful or stops them and supports them with other learning modalities either for that particular topic or for a prerequisite skill that they might be lacking um, and then once they go do a little bit of learning they can come back and try some more practice as they go. And then that very first thing that I mentioned that kind of working individually or group work with those feedback pieces um, and getting that instant feedback really allows teachers to address specific student needs. So if your whole class is kind of working in stations and they're getting feedback, you don't have to answer every single kid's question every single second, but they can get that feedback right away. And then you can kind of work with students who maybe are struggling a bit more or were out the day before and need a little bit more individual work with a teacher. So there are some ideas for strategies for using these books, especially with that added interactivity. Um, I know that that can be a newer piece for some teachers that are used to using a traditional flex book. So we wanted to give you guys some ideas on maybe how you could start tomorrow using some of these resources. So with that, I'm gonna pass this back off to Laramie. He's gonna talk a little bit more about teaching strategies, but definitely walk you through those teacher's guides, both for high school and for middle school, so you can see what they look like. Great. Thanks, Katie. Let me share screen here. And we're going to grab this one. And again, we're back at the CK12 homepage. Um, I have a couple of uh, things I'm going to try and hit along the way here. I did uh, want to show everyone something I meant to show in the first half and forgot. Um, the Algebra, uh, Geometry, and Algebra 2 books, I started to discuss a little bit about the active learning questions. Um, when we designed those, as I mentioned, we didn't really have a good way to interact directly with students. And then I showed you how we're doing that with the middle school math. So I wanted to give you a quick preview. This is one of the lessons that I used as an example in Algebra 1 Student Edition. If you see here, we have the three examples. This section right here is where the uh, active learning questions were. You'll see that uh, right now we're literally, um, as I'm speaking, as a matter of fact, <laughs> writing additional questions from the active learning and making them interactive so that students can get instant feedback um, as they're learning along the way through these lessons. I definitely expect those questions to be live in those books yet this year. Um, I'm hoping that uh, at least nearly all of them will be available for class starting this fall. The books are certainly uh, conclusive and complete as they are but uh, you'll see these, these uh, more interactive questions show up along the way uh, so that by the time students are using them this fall, there will be much more interactivity in them. And you'll be able as a teacher to sort of free up some of your time that's usually spent giving immediate feedback when questions are difficult or answers a student thinks are correct aren't correct. The, this will kind of free you up from that so that you can target individual students that may have deeper or more challenging questions for you. So I think that's kind of exciting. I'm definitely looking forward to having it, uh, having it added in. I think it's going to be pretty neat to, to add that interactivity in. OK, that said, let me go back to the teacher's guides. Um, uh, I'm going to jump in through the Explore window this time. So if I click on Explore up above and go to CCSS, and we see Flexbooks over here. Ta -da, there's that same window that shows the flexbooks we have live. This time I'm going to choose, well, actually, I'm going to start with Algebra 1 again. So, again, as I pointed out right near the top, all four books um, will have this little link to the teacher edition. So, if we click on teacher edition here, one of the uh, quirks, I guess, of the CK12 platform is that 
it numbers chapters for you automatically when you build a book. Um, because of that, we wanted to make sure that the teacher's guide chapter one was the same chapter one in the student guide. So you'll see that uh, in the overall table of contents and the uh, um, individual chapter table of contents, there's usually scope and sequence details at the bottom of the list so that we didn't mess up that, that numbering. So if you're looking for an overview of one of the teacher's guide books, all of them are built that way so that if we go to the bottom, we get kind of the, the overview of everything. And I'm going to start there. So if I go down to chapter six, this is an overview of the entire Algebra 1 course. Uh, you'll see, kind of gives you the big picture, designed to encompass 180 days, uh, two semester school year. It tells you uh, all the different kinds of uh, pieces in the chapter, what the active learning problems do, um, what reads are, uh, how examples are used, and how you should apply those as a teacher, uh, examples versus active learning questions. Um, it mentions that they're interactive throughout the lesson and then uh, talks about the different kinds of interactivity we have, clicks, videos, things that can be printable uh, and given to students. Uh, suggests that you use the adaptive practice that I mentioned, the little pop-up on the lower right for students. And then you'll see hidden clear down here is this little tiny link that says solutions. <laughs> These are the solutions and it's the only place to find them for the chapter assessments. Uh, the goal being, obviously, since we can't prevent a student from creating a teacher account and we can't prevent a student from having access to some of our things, this makes it at least significantly more challenging for a student to get access to any of the, the actual chapter assessments. The other questions that the solutions are easier to find on are considered formative questions that are made to encourage the students to learn along the way. Um, whereas this, these are assessment, they're supposed to be summative uh, questions to see how well the student has understood the material. So if you click on this, you'll find that uh, you get the answer key to each of the chapter assessments. We scroll down a little bit farther, again, talks a little bit more about what to use the interactivity for, and then gives you the overview for the entire book. So we have chapter one, unit one, uh, has a total of 21 instructional periods, has two quizzes and a one-day chapter assessment for a total of 22 periods. Chapter two, chapter three has a midterm project that's expected to take a couple of periods, four and five, and then a semester assessment, which is really the, also the final assessment for the course. And there's a total of five instructional periods set aside for that. There are suggestions for midterm and final projects, um, if you'd rather do those than qu quizzes or tests, and some suggestions on where you might find some more of that information. So let's go back now to the table of contents. And I'm going to pick a chapter, let's say, well, let's here, let's look at one of those ones we saw already. Um, I think linear functions was like 1.1. Yeah, it's 1.1. So first of all, let's take a look at the overview of chapter one. Again, down at the bottom. At the chapter level, the overview as a teacher tells you what each lesson in the chapter is about, the standards that are addressed, gives you direct links to any Plix interactives, um, any quizzes, or adaptive practice that were designed for that particular lesson, and then supplemental exercises that you can give to students that may you know, be looking for a little more practice or may you know, finish other things ahead of time so that you can scale this a little bit for throughout your class. And then the solutions for those supplemental exercises are right here. Larry, I'm gonna stop you huh? for one second because while sure. you're right there, someone asked how many minutes are in an instructional period? So, 50. Based so, okay, you based it off of 50 minute instructional periods. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Answered. <laughs> so, we're looking at the Algebra 1 pacing guide for Chapter 1. You'll see here that, um, uh, as I mentioned, the overview for each lesson is down at the bottom. But if we pick an individual lesson, there we go. Then we get kind of a zoomed in view of the teacher resources for that lesson. You see what the standards are some suggestions for vocabulary, the learning, learning outcomes that are expected for the lesson, and then the particular mathematical practices that we, we feel that lesson addresses more than others. Um, and then you'll see that there's a suggestion here for what to do in each of, in this case, looks like two instructional periods. So, you know, five minute introduction, 15 minute examples, 20 minutes working on the active learning questions, which again, will be interactive here before long. Um, and then we have uh, 10 minutes for in independent modeling practice with the PLICS, and then some homework you can assign the adaptive practice or some of the active learning problems for the students. 
Then finally here, you see that there's some additional resources if you need additional time with your students or backup. There's those supplemental exercises and the solutions for them that we saw in the chapter overview. The final thing that's fantastic about these books is that the authors, as they were writing, took the time to take notes as far as why they were writing each individual example, why they were writing each individual uh, active learning question, why they chose the activities they chose, so that you as a teacher can kind of see inside the mind of the actual author when they were trying to create these books to be as accessible as possible for students. I think this is a fantastic resource so that you really understand what you're supposed to be teaching from each part of this, uh, each part of the lesson. So let's take a look then. Um, I'm going to jump back to the Flexbooks 2. I think I have to go. There we go. Let's go this way. I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the geometry book. And you'll see we have that same link at the top here for teacher edition. I'm going to zip through this one just a little more quickly. Um, if we go to the end of the geometry table of contents, you'll see that there's a midterm and final project. These are huge in the geometry book in particular. They're, these are, these are no fool in projects. And there's a lot of data here for you as a teacher to be able to work with the students through this. And you can actually, I mean, in many cases, you can take a week or two of class time just working on these projects and they're incredibly educational. So a lot of fun if you have students that like getting their hands dirty and want to learn how, um, their, how the geometry actually gets applied in real world, uh, real world situations. And then the other thing we're going to look at here in the geometry is that same overview for the book like we saw in the algebra. Again, reviews what each section of the book is for. And if I move on down to the book overview, you'll see it again tells you how many, how many uh, days of instruction there are for each section of the book and what kinds of resources you'll find. Each of these are available at the chapter level. So all of the high school book teacher resources are very similar. They're laid out in this way. You'll see Again, here's that little hidden thing for the answers to the chapter assessments. They're all laid out very similarly. If we go to take a look at the new MSM 8 book, the teacher resources for it are a little bit different. Um, and they may continue to get different as we sort of uh, polish these to work in the way that's most effective for everyone. But you can see that here's that teacher edition link at the top. And instead of these books just being a list of uh, sort of guides for the teacher, I tend to think of the high school uh, teacher's books as being teacher's guides. This is a teacher's edition of the text. So if we look at, and I'm going to put these side by side so you can see what I'm talking about. If we look at the student edition and the teacher's edition side by side, you'll see to do start okay so here's that first lesson i'm going to go down to that first set of interactive questions just below the interactive so transportation translation if i look at the teacher's version of that same lesson you'll see that instead of just starting with the how are cartoons related the teacher's version starts with the standards and links to those standards the learning objectives an agenda for that day's class and then shows you that students have some of the text and teachers have some of the text and you can see the difference by color. Teachers see things that are in purple, students don't see that, students see anything that's in black. And then when you get down to that part where the interactive questions were, as a teacher you don't have to go through the interactivity. You see the questions themselves as the student sees them, words for word, word for word, and then the answers as the students see them if they get them right, again word for word. Um, that way when a student says, you know, I'm having trouble with question four in this little quiz thing here, and I don't understand why they're asking what they're asking. You as a teacher can just look right through and see, oh, is that the one that talks about the translation? And give them the answer and discuss with them why that answer is the way it is. Um, so these are, these are very, very um, detailed, sort of the teacher follows along with the lesson kind of teacher edition versions of the books. And then at the end of each lesson, you'll see there's a quiz that we built for you. Um, every individual lesson has its own quiz questions usually eight to 12 questions, right around 10. Again, chosen specifically from our adaptive practice to support the lesson itself. If you assign this as a teacher, up here in the top left, assigned to class, then you'll get a, a report on your class performance that goes into your teacher dashboard. So kind of neat, um, gives you a lot more customizability, a lot more uh, data per student and frees you up as a teacher so that you have a lot more time to work on individual students as they have questions while students individually are answering their 
their interactivity and their questions that are built into the lesson. And I think that's most of our topics here, Katie. Was there anything that uh, you can think of I missed when I jump back in? No, I mean, I had just started pulling up the teacher guides again, so I think we were good. Um, we did get kind of one question that you answered live a bit, so I marked it um, done, but that question about students kind of answering or having access to answer keys. And so yeah. we do try to bury them so they're a little bit harder to find for students if you want to use those pieces. Um, but we also really allow for customization of our resources and all of our digital practice, they wouldn't really be able to see that part right off the bat. If you're assigning practice, they're going to be seeing the questions in digital practice long before they would get those kind of answer keys and then you can also customize this quiz so maybe if you want to just walk teachers through a little bit of you know super quick customization of any of the quizzes you've made or also um, actually of the text itself if there's something that you know they want to quickly be able to see that in 30 seconds they can add a new title and adjust some sections that might also be useful certainly certainly and that interest that also brings up another interesting uh, update that we're working on the CK12 is constantly trying to make these books as useful and as uh, convenient as possible for teachers. So you'll see um, if I, as a teacher, I don't know if I've already customized this book, but as a teacher, if you go to the table of contents of any of our books and click on this little down arrow, any of the Flexbook 2s, you'll see it has this customize button. If I click that button, the first thing it's gonna give me is a page that shows the overall view of the book. It's gonna ask me to change the title uh, it might look just slightly on yours because I think I'm a collaborative editor for this book. But you can change the title, call it whatever your class is, for instance, you know, Middle School Math 8, Laramie's class. And then you can change the order of any lessons in the book. There'll be a little plus kind of an arrow right over here on the right, and you can drag and drop lessons in different order. But obviously, if you do that, then the lessons in this book, the one that you just customized, are going to be different than they are in the teacher's guide here. Um, so one thing we're doing now is working on these books so that the lesson guide, the information for the teacher, actually stays with each individual lesson. And I can show you, I think I have a couple of those that are, yes, right here. So you'll see, as a teacher only, when you go to the cover page for a lesson in first Math 8 and then the high school books, either when the, before you open up the lesson or when you click on that related content in the lower left, the first thing that comes up is lesson plan. If you're a teacher, you'll see this. If you're a student, you won't. If you click on that lesson plan, this opens up those teacher's notes, the teacher's version of that book or the teacher's guide, if it's a high school book, that we just talked about um, as being part of the teacher's guide. This way, if you customize the book and you change the order of the lesson, all the resources as a teacher will go with the lesson so you don't have to worry about customizing a teacher's edition also. So just kind of a quick, Again, preview of the future here. But as usual, um, any CK12 book, if you customize it, you'll get into an editor screen. I can show you the editor screen, even though it's going to be a little bit different how we get into it. But I think it's, here we go, this is great. Um, if you customize the book or customize a lesson, the first thing it does is ask you to change the title, as I mentioned. So we say, by Laramie, for instance. Then you can see here is the actual text of that lesson. And maybe I want Mine to say, how are Bugs Bunnies related to geometry? And yes, I know it should be YS, but oh well. Um, however, I want to change this text in here. Laramies would painstakingly draw each image, in which case they would look absolutely terrible because I'm the worst, author, worst, worst artist in the world. Um, once you make those changes, you can either keep as draft if you have other changes you want to make before the students see them, or finalize draft, in which case anybody that looks at that lesson we'll see the changes you made immediately. So you'll see right here, how are Bugs Bunnies related to geometry? Lammy would painstakingly draw each image. You can give this URL to your students or the URL to the whole book that you've customized so that your students can see that these reads are actually customized for them. And it literally can be done in five minutes. It's amazingly fast. And I can definitely tell you by working with all the teachers I've worked with in the past few years, this makes a huge difference for your students. When this says, you know, Mr. Spence's class up here, they realize that this isn't just some book they grabbed off the shelf, but this is something that you actually chose, you actually put some time into as a teacher, and it has some kind of meaning, uh, meaning to them. I've discovered uh, teachers that say that if you go through and just kind of really quickly choose the, uh, the um, 
situations and change them to your students. You know, it'll say in here, you know, Bobby's driving a car down the road and you change that to one of your students' names, they get a huge kick out of that. And it tends to sort of draw them into the story. Um, I had a great discussion with a teacher just last week who said that he spends about five minutes doing that for every lesson and has found a huge difference as far as his students' engagement. So kind of neat tools, uh, great ways for you to make use of, of the resources that CK12 offers to customize our materials and kind of keep them all together for your use as a teacher. Great, thanks. Well, why don't I steal this back for a minute and we can go through some stuff and then we'll always stay on at the end for any last questions as well. Um, so let me swap back over and share a couple extra resources with you guys. Um, so the first is our ck12.org slash tools and apps page. You can find that in the footer of our website um, or through that direct link there. And that's, you know, we had someone asking about Canvas integration and when that would be ready with 2.0. It's already ready with all of our other books, um, but it will be, we're working on that for the coming school year. Um, so you'll see different pieces in there for those particular resources and also our current apps as well if you're trying to use one of those at this point in time. So there's definitely some helpful information on that page. We also have our ck12.org slash overview page, which I think is one of the most useful pages on our site when I try to explain what CK12 offers. And if you think about kind of that explore menu that Laramie showed you with all of the different types of resources that we have, this page tries to drill down just a little bit into what they are. So the first part there is your Flexbooks textbooks page. There's links to both the Flexbook and the 2.0 platform if you expand that, as well as kind of a little text explanation. And then we've included a video of different teachers and students for each topic, kind of talking about how they're using it, why we created it, what that looks like, um, and that might be a great resource page for you to work off of. We have one last webinar for this school year. It's coming up in a couple weeks, and that one is on community contributed non-STEM content. So if you liked this Common Core Math one, but you are teaching some really cool, crazy, like forensic scientists, cryptology class, something else you're teaching across subject areas, or you just wanna build your own book from scratch, this will be a great resource for you in terms of finding resources that CK12 teachers have created on their own and then published to our site or building your own from scratch. And that includes both kind of building your own quizzes and questions as well as the content. And so for those of you that are concerned about students accessing anything, that is one option for you that you could build your own resources and then not ever publish any of those pieces that you wanted. Once again, we offer this resource page, so tinyurl.com slash ck12ccss, and that will go through kind of just some quick reminders on finding or customizing or sharing your own content. Um, so feel free to access that, and hopefully it will be a helpful resource as you move forward. And then I want to talk about our certified educator program. So as I said, we have one more webinar this school year, but every July we host a live, um, kind of online, but condensed intensive kind of program to finish the certified educator program. Registration for that is currently live. Um, so you're welcome to go to that page, ck12.org slash certified, learn a little bit more about that program, and then sign up for any sessions that you wanna take with us in mid-July. We offer multiple times a day, various sessions. Um, and today's session can actually count towards the live requirement for that. So we require five webinars that you attend um, live and then you can watch any additional ones that you want from there. So if you are interested in using today's webinar for that, you're welcome to email us at jumpstart at ck12.org and we can get you the matching assignment for this and you're welcome to just kind of sign up and go from there for any future sessions. So we hope that you will consider that. Finally, before we go, we encourage you to answer a short little feedback We'll send this in a follow-up email tomorrow, but at tinyurl.com CK12 webinar 1819 for this school year, we would love to hear what we can do better, how we can make these webinars more useful for you and go from there. So I think with that, you're welcome to email support at ck12.org with any questions, with any issues that you might be having. Um, it looks like we don't have any questions in our Q&A window. We'll give you another minute or two to kind of put those in before we sign off. But if you have any questions for us, please let us know.
Okay, Laramie, if you have anything else to add, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I think we will wrap up today. I think we're good. I sure appreciate everybody showing up here. I love showing off these new books. I'm very excited where we're headed with them. And I think the interactivity is going to make a big, big difference for students that are so used to everything beeping and, and jumping at them on their screens. <laughs> I think it'll make math feel a little bit more like home. <laughs> Great. Have a great we day, had everyone. one last question that came in at the last second, and that was a question on when sixth and seventh grade might be ready. And if you have kind of a timeline for when we're publishing those, I know our goal was sometime this was spring sometime or into school year. Was sometime a decade ago. Yeah. Now, um, if I don't have middle school math ready to be seen by the world by the end of June, I get run over by a truck. So that's the so answer. we will we will have those <laughs> let me rephrase that we will have those live for this coming school year you'll be able to access some of those resources this summer to start yes. looking at how you might be able to use them in the coming school year and it will follow very much the pattern of the math eight um, you can definitely take a look at it and see how it's structured to see what the sixth grade will be like i would say the only significant difference would be that the sixth grade is even more uh, kind of slanted toward giving you opportunities for away from the screen types of activities. Uh, we kind of tried to lean toward a younger age group there so that there are more things for students to do with their hands if you choose to do that as a teacher. Great. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Bye everyone.